Welcome everyone to our uh, last uh, lecture here uh, in quantitative risk management before we have two additional add-ons for um, the actuarial exam. Um, in section 8.4, uh, the last part of our discussion of extreme value theory, um, we simply want to highlight how we can use uh, these methods we've already seen last week, uh, the generalized uh, extreme value distribution, the generalized Pareto distributions um, in the quantification of risk. And um, we um, um, want to make this, um, want to make, want to put this, uh, all, all this theory to work um, in, um, in a practical example. Now, um, we've seen two theories. First of all, the block maxima method, and uh, second, the threshold exceedances. Uh, we've seen that um, extreme value theory basically works like this. You are interested in extreme values of a distribution. In the block maxima method, uh, you um, split up your data sample into blocks, and in each block, you took the maximum. Equivalently, can you also look at the minimum? And we then had some statistical results that showed us that the distribution of these block maxima converges at some point, if you only were to increase the number of blocks, um, to a generalized extreme value distribution. And perhaps more importantly, um, we saw the theorem of Pickens, Balkema, and Dehaan um, for the distribution of um, extreme values beyond a certain threshold. And uh, we saw this was the access distribution, Fu, for a sufficiently large threshold, U. So if U goes to the extremal point of uh, the distribution, if you only increase U, if you're looking at the right tail of the distribution, we saw that uh, Balkema, Pickens Balkema de Hahn theory uh, tells us that the excess distribution actually at some point follows a, a generalized Pareto distribution. Now, um, we want to model extreme losses, most notably in insurance mathematics and in, in actuarial mathematics. And we first assume that F is a loss distribution. So F is a loss distribution. And later on in the data example, we'll see we will we'll be using uh, Danish fire losses uh, from fire insurances. We assume that F has a right endpoint xf so that's the absolute maximum point uh, that's could be a financial loss of say 5 billion euros could be slightly less and we uh, look for a sufficiently last large threshold u uh, we know that actually um, if we have a threshold u uh, and uh, we have these uh, assumptions made uh, under the pickens balkema de Hahn theorem that the excess distribution will be equal or at least converge to a generalized Pareto distribution with these two parameters xi, xi and beta. Now the assumption that the excess loss distribution follows a generalized Pareto distribution is obviously a simplification, uh, but we simply accept this at this point. We've seen that for this theorem to hold, we need to know the maximum domain of attraction, uh, given that we know the uh, distribution of our sample, but let's for the moment simply assume that all these assumptions are fulfilled, that uh, F lies in the maximum domain of attraction of a GPD, and uh, we are fine. Now next we consider a sample X1 through Xn of our loss distribution F, and a random number NU of sample values exceed the threshold U. We identify these extreme losses with X tilt 1, x tilt 2, and goes until x tilt nu. So it could simply, make, let's make an example, we have 1000 observations. Oh, sorry, let's, let's use the text function. We have, let's say, 10,000 observations, and we are looking at 200 observations. Then, of course, this goes from x tilt 1 through x tilt uh, 200. And from each of these extreme losses, we calculate the access losses. So yj is xj tilt minus the threshold. 
For example, we could argue that we want to look at losses, financial losses, and the threshold is 1 million euros. Based on the NU observed excess losses, we can then um, adjust it. Well, that's not the right term. Uh, we can now try to calibrate um, the generalized Pareto distribution for the true excess distribution FU. And under the assumption of independent observations, remember that we need our sample observations to be independent, otherwise we don't have just one distribution F, and then uh, we'll probably have problems with the um, assumptions uh, and the re, um, yes the assumptions for the pickens balkman de Haan theory. Mm. And under the assumption of independent observations, we can then um, adjust it again, estimate it. We can estimate the um, GPD, the parameters of the generalized Pareto distribution, for which we know that FU converges to. Um, we can estimate those parameters by maximum likelihood, for example. So we need to insert our excess loss observations, yj, into the density function of a generalized Pareto distribution with xi and beta as parameters. We take the logarithm of these uh, likelihoods, we call them likelihoods, then we get the log likelihoods, we sum it all up over all 200 of our excess losses, and then this gives us the log likelihood, and we need to maximize the log likelihood with respect to two parameters, xi and beta. Under constraints, beta uh, should be larger than zero, and so on. Um, so this is uh, the theoretical setting. Let's now do this with a, um, a data sample. Now, first, as I mentioned, for most capital market time series, especially stock returns, the IID assumption we have on those uh, observations is usually not fulfilled. However, uh, you can still use quasi-maximum likelihood. Let's leave that aside for a moment because we are looking at uh, loss data uh, from insurance um, it might be that those are IID. Now, we would have to test this, but it's safer to assume that those data are independent than, say, for example, stock returns. We are looking at the Danish FIRE data set uh, from the R package QRM lib. We have 2,156 losses, over 1 million Danish crones from FIRE insurance between 1980 and 1990. Uh, we now choose a value of 10, which is 10 million crones. Um, as the threshold and we want to model the extreme losses that exceed 10 million crowns. By means of maximum likelihood estimation, very simply done in R, we get the estimated parameters xi hat and beta hat and we can already see that the distribution has very thick edges and tails and in the following figures you now see the plotted losses and the estimated GPD, as well as the empirical distribution of the excess losses. Now, this is the data set itself. As you can see, we have some extremely high losses of 250 million Danish crowns, but most of it is actually here close to zero. Um, and this is the estimated distribution in blue versus the empirical distribution of those excess losses. The empirical distribution of those excess losses is, of course, uh, as you can see here, if you zoom in, I hope I can do this here. Yes, I can do this. If you zoom in, you can see that this is uh, a stepwise function. Yeah? And the main point, the main takeaway here from this slide is uh, it's actually a pretty good fit. The blue line is very, very close to the empirical data, and this gives you some indication that actually this, uh, the assumptions of the pickens balkman de Haan theorem are fulfilled, and that actually the excess data, the excess loss data, do actually follow a generalized Pareto distribution. Okay. Now, um, the generalized Pareto distribution can also be used directly to calculate the valued risk or expected shortfall. The question now at this point is, okay, we have our excess data. What should we do with this? Well, as is tradition in quantitative risk management, we first fit a model to the data and then we make a forecast. We are trying to see what the next 
um, extreme loss could look like. And one way to do this is, for example, by taking the value at risk or the expected shortfall. With the generalized Pareto distribution, this is very simple because, as you can see here, um, you can simply take the, quant uh, the alpha quantile or the value at risk uh, by taking u, uh, beta and xi. You simply have to insert this into these two formulas and again, uh, just like with the normal distribution or the student t distribution, you get an analytical formula for the value at risk and the expected shortfall. Now, for Xi and Beta, we use those estimated, uh, those values estimated with maximum likelihood. For uh, the survival function, we can use the empirical estimator NU divided by N. And together with the given threshold, you can estimate those risk measures, value at risk, and um, expected shortfall as before. Um, now, some additional ideas on extreme value theory. Um, I've only presented to you the very basic models used in EVT. Um, in addition to these two um, models, especially the threshold models, uh, you can also model, or try to model the temporal sequence of the th threshold value exceedances. And for this, uh, one uses so-called uh, point process models. And the result of this is, for example, that the number of losses exceeding a th sequence of threshold values is then distributed binomially with parameters n and again the survival function of f with uh, the sequence of threshold values. Could be, for example, that you have an increasing sequence of threshold. For the limiting case, we obtain a Poisson distribution and the overshoot occurring is occurring according to a Poisson point process. Um, I'm not going to do more detail with the Poisson processes or the point process, um, Poisson point processes, um, but only wanted to mention this here. Same with the multivariate maxima. With the multivariate maxima, so far we've only seen the univariate case. We have one time series, we have one sample of observations, uh, and we split it up into blocks, look at the maxima. Um, but of course, this can also be done in the multivariate case. In the multivariate case, um, you need uh, copula theory. Um, you will be looking at extreme value copulas, etc. And um, this is probably the most important takeaway here. Uh, yes, there exists such a thing as so-called EVT or extreme value copulas. Uh, those are the copulas that result from multivariate uh, extensions of, for example, a GEV. And um, we are not going to look into this in more detail, but if you ever encounter this uh, phenomenon or this problem of having to model the multivariate extreme losses, then you will also need special types of copula. As I mentioned before, this is highly interesting and highly relevant in actuarial, in non-life insurance mathematics, because this is where you have those um, financial losses, uh, which you need to model. Uh, sometimes it's also used in banks and industrial companies, uh, usually when you have uh, operational risk. Uh, it's nowadays more and more used in the modeling of cyber risk, um, but this is probably one of the fields uh, where it's most relevant, especially in banking and uh, other financial institutions, uh, should be industrial firms and enterprises. Enterprise, weird name here. Um, and again, what you do is you model the tails of uh, your loss distributions, and then you estimate a value of risk or say an expected shortfall, um, and then you do a forecast of these risk measures. Okay, so this concludes our lecture. Um, you've now seen a uh, number of models you can use uh, to qu um, quantify risk. Uh, you've seen some of the most important risk measures. Uh, what now follows in the next videos uh, will be two add-ons that are only relevant for those of you who uh, are interested in taking the exam for the German Actuarial Association, or the DAV, uh, Prüfung. Um, for this, you also need those two add-ons on survival analysis and credibility theory. These are very insurer-specific and um, uh, come from non-life insurance mathematics. 
Um, but uh, for this, for the uh, exam and not exam, but for the um, for the class and uh, for your uh, for the things you need uh, to employ and use in your um, in your term paper, in your practical term paper, this should be enough. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I hope you learned a little bit about quantitative risk management. Thank you.